Yo, so this wee beastie, I bought it when it first came out, way back when, um, at the Halifax Mall shop, if memory serves me right. I read a build article back in 2014, and after I read it, I put the kit back on the shelf. I didn't want to know. It's one of those kits that looks great in the box, nice surface detail, looks a nice kit, and then you read the article and think, uh, no, it looks a nightmare. So I've dug it back out again. I'm going to bite the bullet and build it. I did look at all the replacement parts you can get for this kit, the exhaust, the intakes, other bits, and I didn't realise there was an issue with the nose. That was new to me. But by the time you added up all the cost to what is already an expensive kit, it cost me 70 quid at the time, I, I, just couldn't, I just couldn't do that. There are other kits out there. But I didn't want to know, ignorance is bliss. If I had known there was another kit out there in 48 scale, which is slightly better, which I'm sure there is, I would have had to buy it and then either give this away or it would sit on the shelf for eternity. So I'm going to have a go at some of the issues myself. Not all of them, just some of them, some of the major ones. So enough of my yakking and let's get on with the build. Quick look in the box. Etch parts. Decals. Instructions with a colour guide. Wheels and part of the front nose of the fuselage. Central fuel tank. Wings. Undercarriage bays. Rear tails. Whole bag of armament. Fuselage. You also get a, a nose weight and two bits of metal to support the uh, main landing gear. Place parts. So you get a lot inside a small box. So you've got a choice with the front console here. Uh, you can use the plastic parts or you can use the uh, two options from the fret. If you're using them, then this part is required. So I've assembled as much of the cockpit as I want to. Uh, little bits I've left off for ease of painting. Uh, the seat. I may paint the photo etch harness separately. I don't know yet. So I'll paint everything black and then I'm going to try and mix that lurid cockpit green colour. So I've mixed my interior cockpit colour as close as I can get it. Used XF14 as the base colour with a few drops of this yellow which is from the 262 yellow and a few drops of XF2. I've messed around until i got a colour close enough. It's not exact. There are people out there saying we want to just buy the right colour. For the amount of times I'd use that colour, it's not worth the investment. And it's a good skill to have practising mixing colours. So I gave a black coat to the cockpit parts and then it dawned on me with this colour that it's going to need all the help it can. So I've added a white just from above, so I've kept the shadow areas. I'm going to see now what this goes on like. So I've picked out some of the detail by brush and I've just added a, a Flory's black wash. So I haven't wasted a lot of time on the cockpit uh, interior. See it's quite enclosed and by the time I get the hood on we're not going to see a great deal. So 
So the rear wheels with this detail on, um, this needs sorting out, this is far too much. Now looking at photographs, the wall of the tile looks quite smooth, but on some they do have this segmentated raised detail. I'm not going to bother with that, I'm just going to concentrate on filling these huge trenches. These are just some of the parts for the rear landing gear. You get two metal rods, colour coded, one's silver and one's gold, so you don't get them mixed up. There are some large injector pin marks that need uh, sanding flush. Now I'm just going to glue the top half of the assembly to the uh, metal rod. The bottom half I will glue, but I'll leave off. And the reason for this is, looking at the internet, I noticed on some of the drawings, the position of the rear landing gear and there's a good drawing showing you the wheel extended and then compressed with the MIG sat on the ground. So here I've tried to transpose that information to make it a bit more clearer, I hope. The black line work indicates the leg extended, very similar to what the kit's offering, but the red one shows it compressed as the MIG will be sat on the ground. So you can see the kit part matches very closely with the black line artwork. My aim is to try and match it to the red line artwork. So using some pliers and a bit of brute strength, I'm trying to change the angle of the metal rod. Being careful here because the first thing that will give way is the plastic part. So a bit more work to do. You can see the part that I've bent and the kit part. So that's both legs done. I've just got to try and fit all the ancillary parts now. So I've just spruced up the undercarriage legs with a bit of copper wire from an old motor and then some Tamiya tape just to act as clamps. The ancillary parts seem to fit okay. A few of the scissor links had to bend into shape, but other than that, surprisingly no issues. So wheels are finished. A couple of things to say about these. I uh, cut a couple of caps just to fill the hole here. And this green here, is XF5 with just a little bit of XF3. If there are resin replacements for these wheels, it might be worth the investment. I've painted the undercarriage bay silver, and I'm sorry I can't remember which one it was, one of these two. With that paint dry, I'm gonna add a wash. So I've wet the surface with water, and then added a, a water-based wash to the surface. Do this for the rest of the parts. With the wash thoroughly dry, I just wipe away the excess to show the highlights. Now I can assemble all these parts. A uh, word to the wise, this part here, this piston, I should have left off to the very end of the build because by the time I get there, this will have broken off. So I've released all the parts for the exhaust that come with the kit and ordinarily this will be a straightforward build but as every man and his dog knows there are issues with this. There is a resin replacement out there but I'm going to try and modify these parts. There are a number of articles published and online that show you how to do this. They do vary slightly so you can take your pick but before I do that I'm going to assemble the exhaust tubes and the exhaust petals.
With the exhaust tubes dry, I just want to test fit against the fuselage halves. You can see that we've got these triangular shapes, two on the top and two at the bottom. Now the ones on the top of the fuselage, they've compensated for. There's a little nick there. Lovely. But they haven't done for the bottom. So I've marked off where it clashes and it's just a matter of hopefully taking that excess plastic off. So the first thing I'm going to cannibalize is this um, inner ring or afterburner ring, what you want to call it. You can see I've marked off in black where I'm going to go. All this top bit is excess. So that's part cleaned up. Now I've got the task of thinning this ring down considerably. So it almost looks like that. And I got to thinking maybe if I glued this piece together, cleaned it up and just replace it with this part rather than me trying to take all this excess off. So I don't know. Um, I'm going to do the other side and clean it up and then put it to one side while I uh, have a think about it. So the next thing is to cut these tubes down to size. I'm um, looking at photographs and there's loads out there. I've decided to cut around here. So I'll keep this bin there. Now by doing this, this has a knock on effect in all sorts of ways, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to them. So I've cleaned the part up. I don't know if you can see if it will focus. I've had to chamfer the inboard part of the tube because of the afterburner ring. Um, that's how it comes. And you can see where I've had to take a bit off around the edge there, just so that uh, I can use this part, sit the modified afterburner ring in there, and then hopefully it fits nicely. Uh, you do get to the point where you think, I'll just buy the resin replacement. The last part to modify is the outer exhaust. First thing I'm going to do is just take these little ridges off so it's all flush. Once I've done that, I've marked off here with a black line the amount I'm going to take off. So I'm going to take off that amount from the back. So with the parts separated, I'm just going to clean this bit up now and make sure it's all level. So I'm going to use the parts um, that I cut from here to replace this part. So I need to cut these off. So the idea is to glue this inner ring, something like that. I've got to get all the angles and dangles right, but um, so I should glue where the split is, the weak joint, and glue something like that. Right, bit of a change of plan with what I last said. So just doing a bit of dry fitting. And I think it's going to go like this. Um, this piece, you can see how much I've cropped it. I will glue to this outer ring, this um, has to be flush with the end there and then these two inner rings that I was going to glue to that I'm just going to paint and perhaps PVA glue something like that. Now this is very simplified if you actually look at the photographs of the engine there's a lot more going on. Even this part is completely wrong. Uh, it should be a lot slimmer, not as uh, chunky as this. Using X3, XF3 and a little bit of white, I've created a colour for the afterburner rings.
So for the rest of the exhaust parts, I've given a base coat of black. I'm going to apply a mixed color of XF24 with XF68. This will give me a slightly chalky gray color. Rear exhaust blades, I've given a black wash, and now I'm just going to highlight with a bit of graphite dust. Here I've added a brown wash to the uh, afterburner rings, and now I'm just going to pick out certain details with a Tamiya black wash. With the exhaust tubes, I'm just going to highlight with a bit of grey pastel. So I need to assemble these three parts so I can start on the fuselage halves. The last two parts of the exhaust, the inner and outer petals, I can leave them to the very end. Now before I can add the uh, internal assemblies, the wheel wells and the engine exhaust, I've just been adding some tabs just to make sure I've got a strong enough support on that seam there. I've done it on the front here as well. Also the upper and lower air brakes are horrendous fits, especially the top one. And I've shimmed the gaps using the plastic card. Cut like that and then slot it in. So I'm going to trim the excess off and then sand it down. So I've just added the, uh, I think this is a brake chute housing. That needed a bit of jiggery pokery as well, a lot of dry fitting. Uh, there's that gap that's filled with white plastic card. So I started to assemble all the internal bits. Uh, the wheel bays went in okay. I've played safe and added a bit of uh, support with these plastic tabs, but I ran into problems with the uh, rear exhaust. Now I know because I've changed the dynamics, I would have issues. But this side here just wouldn't seat properly. So I hacked all sorts of bits off internally. It still wouldn't sit properly. But by splitting the assembly into two, it's seated properly now. So I'm just going to give you a quick look of um, scrap heat challenge there. I've dry fitted everything. All works. So we're all hunky-dory. So I can start gluing the fuselage halves. I'm just going to concentrate on one side first. Glue it tape it up and then leave it to set. Once it's all set, I'll do the other side. So I'm going to glue these uh, fuselage halves together, but before I can do that, I need to glue the nose wheel bay and the cockpit. So I've just bolstered everything up with a few bits of plastic card, just to give it a bit more of a robust feel. Uh, we've got these very strange and dainty looking attachment points. All fits, all works. It just doesn't give me any confidence, that's all. So I'll quickly talk about the wings. Uh, they come in three parts, lower, upper wing, and the wing tip here. Um, not a brilliant fit, even with all the care in the world taken. Trying to clean this dog leg up is gonna be a nightmare without losing lots of detail. And then we've got this here, which has a raised surface, uh, different thicknesses. So it's gonna take some time and effort to sort out. This piece is gonna be gash, so it doesn't really matter. This is how I do it. Doesn't mean that you have to do it this way. You could have sprue glue to hand if you've got that sort of thing, but I always prefer using the same plastic to create my glue as the kit I'm building. So 
So I'm probably going to apply several light layers. Keep them light so it dries quicker. You try applying this stuff on thick, it'll take ages to dry. Nice light layers and build them up. So all those uh, seams, gaps have all been filled in. I won't know until I start sanding whether I'll need another application of the uh, liquid plastic. Now I don't mind the poor design of the wing, the way it goes together. I don't mind the gaps. I don't mind filling in. I even don't mind sanding. What I do mind is trying to rescribe and match the surface detail of the kit's part. So that's something fun for me to look forward to. It's all sanded and rescribed. I won't know until I get a coat of paint on whether there's any more work to do. Uh, I use this to rescribe my panel lines. Uh, another thing to watch out for are the uh, wing fences as well. How uh, they should end about there, but on the kit, they've got it overhanging by about a couple of mil, so it just wants trimming back. So here are four parts that make up one of the intakes. I also got supplied with some photo etch as well. Now from what I read, there are issues with the internals. It's not the end of the world. With a bit of plastic card and a bit of effort, it can be salvageable. But thankfully, Edward supply another option. And for the price, it's a no brainer really, as far as I'm concerned. So hopefully it should be a quick fix. We'll see. So, right, the pain never ends. Uh, they ask you in the instructions to assemble the intakes to this assembly here, the cockpit assembly. But I found that the body width is wider than this assembly. So I'd have some steps either side. So what I'm gonna do is glue the intakes separately. So glue this one, start at the top, Make sure it's all flush and neat. Let the glue dry and then do this side and work my way around. So that way I should have little or literally no filler to use at all. Once the intakes are both dry and set, feed this down the middle and see what kind of gaps I've got. So by treating the intakes as separate entities, the fit's been pretty good. Very little filler. The only issues I had were at the bottom. I've just filled these gaps in with a bit of plastic card. Other than that, pretty good fit. I've added the ball bearing nose weight. It's held in by a bit of plastic card. Now dry fit in the cockpit assembly in between the intakes. There are gaps, but there is an easy solution to this. And the solution to this is by adding plastic strips to these raised areas. So a bit of dry fit in, a bit of sanding, should fit wonderfully. So with all the sanding and rescribing finished on the fuselage, I was quite happy now to add Edward's intakes. These are a very good fit and all held in place with super glue. Still got the FOD guys to do, but they'll be one of the last things I do on this build. The front cockpit shroud is held in by one pin, not the most secure fit. 
I can now add the front wing screen. This is unusual because it's actually inset into the fuselage. Thankfully, it's a good fit. The rear hood had a few issues, but with a few slithers of plastic card, they were remedied. Um, another little thing I want to mention before I forget are the uh, rudders on the tail fins. I was about to glue them in position and I realised that uh, there's a, there was a step at the top. I haven't altered the kit's part at all, so you can see where the kit part went and then there was a step. So I looked at drawings and photographs, from what I can see that shouldn't be there. So to the kit's part I've added a bit of plastic card. So once the good set properly I trimmed all the excess off and then sanded the shape in. So I did the ventral fins and the tail fins and I was left with some horrendous gaps. Gaps that big I'm going to have to use a two part putty. I started to cover some of the detail up because this process is new to me. I don't find many kits with gaps this size if at all. So this is a two part putty I've used. I've created some putty rolls, fed them into the gaps and then using a cotton wool bud and water wiped all the excess off. So I've just got the wings to add now. They're not a bad fit, not brilliant, but better than everything else. So my first application of colour on the MIG is a mix of XF83 with white. Once that's dried, I should use that mix and add a little bit of XF23. So I've got a slight bluish tinge to that grey. With the second coat dried, I'm starting to mask off all the detailing. When it came to masking some of the areas off on the ventral fins, I noticed that the surface detail is completely wrong. So I'm just going to leave it and scratch my head and decide what to do later. Next, I'm going to use the first mix I've made and pick out certain panels across the MIG by brush. So the next thing I do, now this paint is well and truly dry, is wet sand the whole surface. So I've wet sanded the whole surface, giving it a clean a few times. Now I'm going to start to do the bright work. I've got the central tank to paint. And I've just started to mask off the back. I wasn't too sure about the ventral fins, whether they were the actual body colour or metal. From what I can gather, they're going to be the same colour as the back here. First coat is going to be AK's Extreme Metal Aluminium. So I've masked off first some of the rear panels, giving it a coat of um, pale burnt metal and then just a light dusting of steel. So I'm going to mess around using these three oil colours, black, yellow ochre and burnt umber. So just messing around with those three colours, dabbing, blending in. 
So I've got rid of all that masking and now I'm ready for the panel wash. Now I'm not gonna use black because it's a bit stark and brown. So I'm gonna use a dark gray, but I've had to make my own using watercolors. I've just added a little bit of detergent so it doesn't bead on the surface. But before I add it to the main model, I just wanna test it first on one of the kit's pylons. Yeah, that'll do me. So I wiped the grey wash excess away with a cloth. I used a brown wash for the back of these engine panels and I've just sealed everything in with a varnish. Uh, one thing I forgot to say were I've picked out a few panels at the back here, masked them off and then just used a bit of silver paint and stippled around the edges. So I'll let the varnish dry and then I'll start to have the decals. Thankfully there's not many. So the decals went down reasonably well, a bit brittle. I used some Tamiya thinner just to settle them down. There's quite a few stencils on this MIG. I think they're overscaled and a bit overbearing, but once again, personal opinion. I've sealed everything in with some artist acrylic matte varnish. One thing that didn't turn out too well was essential fuel tank. I went overboard with the oil stains. So I've just been faffing about here and there with some water-based washes. <laughs> One of the most involved things I did was add some oil stains to the rudders on the tail fins. So I think I'm ready to assemble all this now. I'm sure there's something I've missed off. But before I do that, I must finish off these FOD guards using a ballpoint pen. Right everybody, let's get this thing assembled. I hate this part. This is where your chickens come home to roost. Fingers crossed, eh? So this reassembly I've had to uh, chop up. It wouldn't fit as it was previously. I think it's the bottom ventral fins and partially the top fins as well. So rather than it all snapping away and having to redo it all, I just uh, split them in two. And then just glue the cap back on.
So that's all the stuff added underneath. I just got to flip it around and add the bits on top. Thankfully, there's very little of that. There's a pitot tube and uh, IFF rods, which I had to create myself. So I've been through the pain barrier. I finished. Well, I finished with it anyway. I love the Foxbat. It's such a big, aggressive plane. And it's such a shame about this kit. The inaccuracy is okay, but it's the fit issues. It's such a shame. I'd love someone to bring out a 30 cent scale fox bat. Can you imagine the size of that? I'd paint it all black and give it a shark's mouth. But that's another story. So I do want to thank you for watching and I do hope to see you for the next video.